everyone in Hello. I am streaming this to my YouTube channel just so that you guys know. Uh, if you are watching this, then uh, at a later time, then know that this was recorded live. I have about 10 minutes uh, before my next Hallow class, which is, I'll get you guys a link to my, my class that I'll be starting at the top of the hour. So that if you want to go ahead and uh, get ready for that class, you can subscribe so that you're able to participate live. Uh, this is going to be my communication starters class, which is conversation. How do you start a conversation and how do you keep it going? Okay. So um, my next, or let's see, we'll type join my next class. And there's the link. I'm going to pin that message so that if you want to copy and paste that, you'll be able to join my class in just a few minutes. And remember that Hello has a promo going on right now through the end of the month. If you use the code hollow summer, you can get 30% off all classes. So that's uh, group classes, group live classes, as well as one on one classes with teacher. So if you've wanted to book a class with teacher April, but you're like, oh, I don't know if I really have the money. Now is the time you want to be doing that because let me tell you, my one-on-one -on -one classes are $8. And if I subtract 30%, they become $5.60. All right. So instead of $8, you can one-on-one, -on -one, book a one-on-one -on -one class with teacher April for only 560. Use the code. Okay. There you go. Now you know. All right. So we had some fun this morning. Well, it was morning for me. So earlier today doing a couple of idioms. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go do that for just a few quick minutes uh, just to kind of get warmed up and get going so that when I start my conversation class, I'm already in hollow mode, ready to share my knowledge with you. Okay, so bum, ba, da, dum. idioms are things that are phrases that we use in English that cannot be taken literally. Okay, you cannot take them word for word. They stand or they represent a concept. And if you don't know what that is, you're going to be very confused of why someone might have used that phrase in a response to you. Okay, so here's the one for right now. I'm going to type it for you and then I'll show you the card. Low man on the totem pole. Have you heard of that one? Have you heard of it? Yes? No? Hi, Sam. Hi, Hater. Let's see who else is here. Amine Abdurizak. Abdelra Rahman. Uh, Zakin Prusheng. Sama, and I think I saw Apollong up there too. Excellent. Okay, so do you know what low man on the totem pole means? Let's read this. When it comes to picking sides for a softball game, who is usually low man on the totem pole? Hmm. Low man on the totem pole. Do you know what a totem pole is? A totem pole is, um, it's a pole, obviously, it's in the name, uh, that is carved usually out of one piece of wood. 
Let me find a picture for you. Oh, yes. They are uh, more common in the Pacific Northwest. I'll share my screen for you. So you can see some pictures of totem poles. There you go. So they're usually animals that are kind of s s stacked on top of one another. Let's see if we can find up a little information right quick of the history. So totem poles are monuments. Ooh, that was a big zoom. Created by First Nations of the Pacific Northwest to represent and commemorate ancestry, histories, people, or events. Totem poles are typically created out of red cedar a malleable wood relatively abundant in the Pacific Northwest and would be erected to be visible within a community. So it's kind of a um, something to create as a, 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 a memorance, a to remember a specific thing that has happened, a memory, okay? All right, some, I am talking about idioms, idiom phrases, okay? So the one that I shared mentioned totem pole. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew what a totem pole was. So let's, um, our idiom again. When it comes to picking sides for a softball game, who is usually low man on the totem pole? All right, so if a totem pole is carved out of one piece of wood and there's different characters on top of each other, the one at the bottom is going to be the lowest right? So low man on the totem pole means you're the one at the bottom. So it literally means, I will type this for you. Oh, I can't see what I'm typing. I'm going to move it over there. Um, okay, so let's type it again. Low man on the totem pole means one with least seniority or influence, the least important, or low in rank. I typed that really quick. There could be a typo. Low man on the totem pole means one with least seniority or influence, least important, low in rank. All right, so... When you are playing a sport as a child and they're picking sides, I want him on my team, him on my team. If you're the last person that gets picked, you're the low man on the totem pole. Nobody wants to be the low man on the totem pole, do they? No, because that means you're at the very bottom. Um, Kalo, it could be a loser, someone that is uh, low in rank, not very important. Um, okay, good. Because I was thinking, don't actually call someone a loser. That's not kind. <laughs> um, so if you start a new job and you have to start the job at the very bottom and then work your way up, then you would say, yeah, I'm starting a new job. I'm the low man on the totem pole. That just means you're at the lowest level, okay? Um, it could be bad luck, but it's more about like rank or senior, like um, least important, okay? Uh, so here's what's interesting about this idiom is where it came from, its origin. My little card here says, this idiom doesn't really make sense. Since in the 1700s, the bottom figure on a totem pole was the most important, not the least important. Interesting. So somewhere along the way, somebody completely flipped the meaning. So look, you can look at it here. Low man on the totem pole. The meaning is one with least seniority or influence, least important, low in luck. The origin, this idiom doesn't really make sense. 
since in the 1700s, the bottom figure on a totem pole was the most important, not the least important. So that idiom uh, is the complete opposite of uh, what it actually, you know, comes from. Sometimes idioms are like that. They're just tricky and they don't make sense. <laughs> All right. Yep. That's what I did, uh, Kalu. So it is now top of the hour. Time for me to head over to my conversation class. If you'd like to join us, I'll see you there.